Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my uh, video about why the Vagrant Queen TV show was canceled after just one season. But before we get into that, Jawbreakers, Grand Bazaar, graphic novel, Spendables Go to Hell, graphic novel, Pandemic comic book, Do As You're Told, The Ballad of No comic book. So, um, it's been in, the, been in like an hour or so, recently, this afternoon, uh, the news came out that the Vagrant Queen TV show on the Sci-Fi Network uh, was canceled. Um, and, uh, okay, so first of all, just to, you know, to get this out of the way, anyone who gets a TV show for, uh, it's an accomplishment, and uh, they should be proud of it. That being said, this was a disaster from the beginning, almost um, unbelievable unbelievably so and the reason was uh, a book that had no sales and no audience was optioned because of the gender identity of you know the one of the co-creators um, and then uh, nobody ever did a little course correct where they said oh there's there's nothing here so let's just um, uh, get right into it uh, read this one I don't trust this other one there's too much stuff on here and I feel like it's I feel like I'm gonna start getting like an autoplay. Yeah, this is a short one, so I'll just okay. So I don't trust you there, deadline. Um, so Vagrant Queen canceled at Sci-Fi exclusive. Uh, the rookie drama, an acquired co-production for the Cabler, struggled to find an audience. So that what they're doing right there is they're telling you one of the reasons this was cut after um, one year is that this was not created by sci-fi it was acquired by them so as far as i know sci-fi only got money off of the advertisements um and obviously if not a lot of people watch then they're not going to get a lot of ad revenue and it's 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 a wrap uh so uh, vagrant queen's reign is over sci-fi has opted to cancel the space drama based on the vault comic of the same name after one season the series from creator and showrunner Jem Gerard struggled to find an audience after launching in March. Uh, I mean, not to really just hammer it home, but this book or this this show was launched literally like the week everyone started getting locked down in their house. Um, so it should have had an audience. There were more people than ever just stuck at home watching TV, and it just it just didn't happen. Um, the uh, the drama averaged 417,000 total viewers and a mere 131,000 in the advertiser covered, coveted adults 18 to 49. This one's weird. So I'm assigned, I mean, it was a late show. So is it like kids and old people? So the prime demo for advertisers is 18 to 49, but that was only like a third of the viewers. Um, in an attempt to boost the drama's fortune, Sci-Fi moved the series uh, from Fridays at 10 p.m. to Thursdays at 11 p.m. after three episodes um, uh, because I guess that had worked before. While posting an 11% gain, the series still wrapped its run as Sci-Fi's lowest rated series among total viewers and in the demo since 2019. Vagrant Queen was not a sizable financial investment for Sci-Fi. The series was an acquired co-production from Blue Ice pictures sci-fi has turned increasingly to acquired series to bolster its dwindling inventory of scripted originals um okay so basically they're um they're reducing their risk they'll say hey we got a network we got you know we're in the different cable packages we got time slots bring us your stuff they don't have to go budget they don't have to pay for it and so it's it's easier for them to you know cut um and then the the uh showrunner uh, just uh, released this what, a couple hours ago, oh, like uh, less than two hours ago. Uh, for all my vagrants, I'm so sorry. I wish I had better news to share. Hashtag vagrant queen. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little t uh, stop right there. Uh, titles matter. Comics matter. Black Lives Matter. Things matter. Vagrant is an extremely off-putting word. You might as well call her homeless princess. In fact, actually, that might be nicer vagrants are people who piss on the front doors of storefronts in san francisco naming something vagrant and it not being a documentary on you know pbs 
you're gonna have a bad time. Words matter, titles matter. It's, it would be very difficult to make anything titled Vagrant Queen successful. Um, to my dearest vagrants, I'm sad to announce that sci-fi will not be renewing Vagrant Queen. I'm sorry, I wish I had better news to share. Um, uh, to everyone on the cast, you're great. To the people who created the comic, it was a world I fell in love with from page one, and it's been so great getting to know you all. Okay, so not much, not much, you know, uh, stuff there. Just thanking everyone. So, I have never seen the show. I have read, I believe, all of the. I didn't read the trade paperback. Well, that's. I've. I believe I've read all. No, actually, I've read. I did read the new miniseries. I'm screwing this all up. I read one or two of the first one, and I read uh, all three of the second one, but I don't think I, I think I only did a review of the second miniseries. I only reviewed one of those issues, and I'll, I'll get into it. Um, uh, so this uh, goes back to uh, uh, June of 2018, two years ago. The first issue came out. I believe this is one of my videos got, that got uh, struck for copyright. Um, so it was in a live stream, and if I remember correctly, I only ever reviewed Vagrant Queen number one. And the reason I never uh, reviewed it again was it was so incompetent that it felt like bullying to critique it. There was just nothing there. There was terrible art. There was a generic story. There was barely a story. There was an unlikable lead. And it was very much something that felt like it was created as a package, um, not to get, you know, beat a dead horse, but as far as I can tell, Mags uh, has an engineered career, a manufactured career, in which a, uh, a literary agent and uh, was very savvy about culture and said, you know, you are of a particular gender identity that's very hip and wow and now, you know, as they would have said in 1967, I can sell this to Hollywood. All you need to do is get books out there, put a lot of books out there, and let me, I've, you know, I've done the video before showing Mags coming from nowhere within, you know, the first two years of her career had a ridiculous amount of one-shots, miniseries, uh, mostly miniseries, I'm not, I don't think she ever did. She had a series, but it didn't, it was like going to be a Kim and Kim series, but it didn't, they did like three issues and then it just stopped because of uh, uh, Black Mask effectively kind of. They didn't go out of business, but they just kind of stopped because nobody bought their stuff, <laughs> which is a lot like going out of business. Um, but uh, so I, you know, it's it's a plan. It's a plan. Um, you have something that you can sell to Hollywood an identity. You have comics that are produced and are physical objects that can be put on a desk. And then you just got a lot of moxie and, and enthusiasm and you just sell it. And um, I'd, I already predicted that one of Max's properties was going to be, and she had a lot of properties. I believe she has like 12 different IPs. And again, this is in a very short amount of time. Uh, never had any good sales, but would always get, you know, companies would always, you know, a very, I don't know if I'd call the literary agent powerful, but I would say he's successful, was able to get her miniseries constantly picked up. And this is for her own IP, which basically it's kind of like the thing. Uh, Mag's got other people to, you know, front the money for printing and you know, publicity, and then she would get the benefit. Um, I predicted it was going to be a cartoon because her stuff is very kind of like geared for like 10 year olds. Um, it's that style of, of humor. Um, so it's like probably going to be like a cartoon network or something like that. Um, but then there was a, uh, there was a, what do they call it? Intersectionality. Uh, all of a sudden, kind of out of nowhere, um, uh, black women, specifically black lesbians, were like in tons of comics. And uh, black women, not specifically black lesbians, but a lot of black women were sought after for TV shows. So to have a trans creator selling a sci-fi show with a black lesbian lead, that was, you know, it was going to get you to the front of the line for pitches and things like that. So uh, Vagrant Queen, of all the other ones, is the one that got greenlit and, you know, uh, very quickly made into a series. I do have some slight other theories. Uh, it's mainly based around um, the lead actress who was, oh, I don't trust you. You're going to start autoplaying right there. Oh, geez. 
And I had to turn off Ghostery and Ublock to, uh, to, 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 to literally order a pizza online because it was screwing up the CAPTCHA for some reason. So the lead, and this is the art, that's, that's the interior art as well. The lead looked surprisingly like the character, and I almost feel like it was a package deal. I don't have any proof, it's, it's just a, just a guess. Um, I, I gotta turn, I gotta turn Ghost Rain. This thing's gonna destroy my computer. All right, and there we go. You gotta take care of your computer. You can't be going on bleeding cool without freaking you blocking ghost reactivated. Okay, so ah, nothing's gonna melt. Okay, so um, okay, so let's just go through it. So I, I did the first uh, issue, and it was two thousand. That was for number one, and this is really at the height of mags being in the news constantly. Um, uh, so 2000, and then on the second issue, this is from the 2018 miniseries, 1200. On the third issue, you can do it, here Comicron, let's just go ahead and just give you a little, another try. On the third issue, Nine hundred and ninety three. And on the fourth issue of the original miniseries, 769. Um, uh, that was in September of 2018. And then there was a trade paperback that came out in February of 2019, just a few short months before the, you know, the project was announced. And that had how many sales? It had sales of 200. Uh, so you can see that these, um, you can probably see why I didn't, like this was, such a failure it it was it it felt like bullying to like just hammer it home just kind of mentioned it and I mentioned it when things like this happened and again you have to go back to this time frame where Mags is working for Marvel DC IDW Vault Black Mask am I missing any Comixology uh, presents Comixology exclusives with no fans with no sales um, and uh, so uh, what if you were publishing Vagrant Queen, but someone forgot the last issue? I guess. Okay, so it's a short article. Vagrant Queen is a comic book series by Mag Visaggio, Jason Smith, Harry Saxon, and Zach Sam about. Oh, <laughs> it's Zach Sam about, but Rich accidentally is just making up new last names. Um, uh, so to describe the, the plot, um, uh, Directed as, uh, described as Star Wars, directed by the Coen brothers. I I haven't read all of it, but I've read five issues and it absolutely is not. It is Star Trek, if you changed a couple things and all of the characters were cunts. That, that's, that's, I've read it. You haven't. Nobody has. I've read it. That's what it is. Everyone's an unlikable cunt and it's Star Trek with a couple of cosmetic changes. Um, the series ran up to issue five and is being collected in a trade paperback out in 2019. But it's not the be all and end all. It seems that Vault simply seems to have forgotten to solicit the final sixth issue, or Diamond did, or someone did. Issue five came out at the end of October. By the way, I, I, I've checked a million times. There's no evidence that issue five came out. As far as I can tell, five and six both did not come out, even though they were drawn. Uh, so basically, to, to wrap it up, the book sold so poorly that they didn't even bother putting out all of the floppies as floppies. They got to issue four, they got orders for 769, and they just called it a wrap. They're like, whatever, we'll just do it in the trade paperback. And of the 769 people who you know bought Vagrant Queen, 200 wanted to know how it ended. Now that's actually being kind of tongue in cheek because it's the, it's the direct market where sell through is about half of what goes on the stands. So honestly, there might have been about 400 people in a nation of a third of a billion that actually bought the last, the fourth issue, which is the last one that went on the stands as far as anyone can tell. And then uh, it was announced as a uh, TV show with, you know, it's, it's 769 as it's the last sales of its floppy. And then it came back. 
and it came back with 2,696. As, as you can see here, the first one launched with 2,000, so this is a great success, except for that asterisk. That asterisk means returnable. Most books in the direct market are not returnable, so there's no risk. So the store can, oh, whatever, order five of them, who cares, we get to return them. The second issue, which was not returnable, 885. The third issue, 791. So first miniseries, fourth issue, 796. Second miniseries, third issue, 791. I believe the fourth issue was released on Comixology. Um, but so uh, now I didn't watch the TV show. And again, it felt weird, like bullying. Like, but I had assumed a couple of things. And I talked to people who watched it, uh, and I was completely wrong. I was I assumed that, you know, people in Hollywood are just pitching everything all the time. You know, it's always it's always funny to see those articles that say, you know, so and so says they'd like to play a Marvel superhero. Yes, so would everyone in Hollywood, actors, homeless people, everyone would play a Marvel superhero. Um, but you know, you can get a couple articles on heroic Hollywood or whatever uh, out of that. So my assumption was that there were a bunch of professionals who knew how to make a good TV show and you know one of them was going to pitch it but in their head they were going to be like look we know the deal. We know what year it is. We know what's happening. We know trans creator plus black lesbian lead. That's going to get to the head of the line and uh, we'll just go from there. But I thought after they got approved, they were going to say, look, there's barely any source material. We got to get 10 episodes out of what the time were six, six 20 page issues. And these were hour long episodes. So I thought they were going to go, look, it's going to be called Vicar and Queen. There's going to be a lead that's going to have the same name as the lead. And then they're just going to do whatever. And then I talked to people and they're like, no, it was like really faithful. It was very faithfully adapted. To which I say, why? Government name, what are you smoking? Like, you have the evidence. Now, I'm guessing they never bothered to do the due diligence of actually looking how many sold. The agent said, cult hit or hit, and nobody ever went to say, because like I said, you can fake mags as a successful popular um, uh, writer to, you know, an executive. You can literally cover that executive's desk with floppies. Oh my gosh, look at this. This must be, this must be the new Frank Miller. This must be the next Tom King. Look at how popular she is. Look at how many series she has. And what happened was you got all the way to a TV show and now everyone's looking for work. Um, this is a, this is something where you know, I, I used to say only two people benefited, Mags and her agent. And now I'm wondering if anyone benefited, if, if even a single person benefited. And yeah, you know, yeah, the actress, the lead actress, she got to, you know, have on a resume. I've been a lead on a TV show. That's cool. You know, people got whatever pay a sci-fi TV show pays. I'm guessing, you know, towards the minimum. But as far as I can tell, everyone lost. Uh, Mags lost by not being held to the same standards as anyone else. Mags lost that opportunity to grow. Mags lost that opportunity to accept a defeat as a consequence of your own action. Why did Vagrant Queen uh, sell so poorly? Because it was terrible. But if you're getting nothing but uh, shield pieces for you, if you have a literary and Hollywood agent, like your first year in the industry, you can probably get into your head, oh, it's just haters, it's just haters. But this was, this, it was always heading to this. And it's really, really sad. And it's evidence of the, the, the uh, you know, they say the soft bigotry of low expectations. I would call it uh, the very hard bigotry of no expectations. When you say someone is of this group, therefore they are aggrieved, therefore any criticism of them is harassment or assault. Uh, therefore, they are immune from things. Therefore, we are going to say everything there is, they do is good. Therefore, even though after their sixth or seventh or eighth failed miniseries from four or five different, we're still going to give this person more work. 
there needs to be a time where someone speaks to Max like a person and is honest with Max. It says, you can't write. You can't sell. Nobody likes your stuff. Nobody watched your show. You know, a, a, a comic that nobody read was turned into a TV show that nobody watched. The lowest of, you know, the last few seasons. And it's really, really sad. And no, but none of these allies have done anything but set up Mags for failure. You know, Mags is obviously a participant in this. So is there a broader cautionary lesson? Well, I've got one that's going to, you know, probably not blow your mind if you're a normal person. Treat everyone equally. A Mags who was treated equally would not have gone this far or fallen this far. A Mags who was treated like an equal would have had a dead stop in the first, you know, two miniseries like, whoa, your sales are really bad. Like, what's going on? Maybe we need to switch you up on a different, you know, uh, genre. Maybe we need to get you a co-writer, a good co-writer, not a random co-writer. You know, it just, uh, she has this co-writer for the Humanoids H1. Humanity first book. Ed, but that person's done nothing uh, either. We need to get you with someone more experienced. Or... You might be fundamentally unqualified. Nobody is entitled to have a career as a writer. You get a couple of swings at bat for, you know, by hook or by crook, by however you get it. And you either put up or shut up. You know, you you sell books. You know, uh, you you got the freaking, you know, the only receipts that matter are the receipts for sold books, you know, in the comic book industry. Uh, and for, you know, views from that target of 18 to 49. That's a pretty large demographic. Getting 113,000. I mean, let's see. It's the highest selling book from. So the month that Mag sold 769 copies of her book, there were three uh, comics that had, you know, more sales, you know, to stores than there were viewers of the TV show. So, again, the solution to this, treat everyone equally. You, you, you want to prove you're a good writer, you need to prove it in sales. Because the, the, the awards are now are completely converged and they give them away partially for merit and sometimes, you know. Well, it seems like the nominations are about half for merit, half for identity, but they're still winning based on merit. Yeah, I mean, there weren't like, oh, well, then there was Eric Anderson. So, yeah, just destroyed my own theory right there. Um, but treat people equally. Uh, criticism is not harassment. Uh, and it's certainly not an assault. Um, uh, you need to sell your stories based on the characters, the story, the art, uh, how it makes the reader feel, their excitement. Uh, a good test of if something has actual fans is there is there fan art for it. That's a great test. Google fan art for any IP and then see how much of it you know uh, comes up. If you, very little or none of it, then there there aren't fans. People like to draw characters they like. They just straight up and down. I got an amazing. Uh, fan art of uh, no from uh, uh, do as you're told so just to wrap it out wrap uh, wrap it up it is it is an accomplishment especially if your goal was to use comics to get a tv show or a movie deal in that way you are you know successful um but the problem is you're gonna get you're gonna you're gonna have that you know peter principle of you know people get promoted to their level of incompetence and that's what we saw here uh the solution was for all of these fake allies to treat mags like a regular person and give her harsh direct criticism like everyone else you know Dwayne Swierzynski gets harsh direct criticism Tom King does Scott Snyder is why oh did you bigots not give that to mags well we, we know it's because of mags's trans identity they were terrified of giving mags the equality and respect of honest and harsh criticism and uh everyone lost so anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. Oh, I, I, I think I made my point about the TV show. That the people on the TV show should have said, look, there's no real source material. What there is is not good. People don't like it. So we're just going to we're gonna vamp. We're going to expand upon it. We're going to give it more depth and more excitement. And I remember talking to a friend. I go... I just asked some random question. The funny thing is that the, the friend kept getting like kind of annoyed. Like I had seen the show and was just pretending not to see it. I go, 
I go, which of the, you know, female leads are lesbians? And my friend was like, all of them. Like, what a stupid question. I go, of the, uh, the white men, how many were uh, incompetent, cowardly, uh, or evil? And my friend was like, like, what is this stupid game? Like, you, you all of them, that, all of them, all of them were. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, uh, it's sad. It's sad. Uh, Mags was subjected to years of bigotry by her, her so-called friends and peers and allies. Um, and she had an opportunity to grow. I believe that's probably, you know, past. It's going to be hard to say, hey, you know, those, those criticisms from three years ago, those were right. Maybe I, I should listen to them. The, the human brain doesn't really work like that. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, going back to my stuff, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. Awesome story. I'm very excited about this. Oh my gosh. And the uh, the mask, I just got the second prototype. Second prototype looks like the picture. <laughs> I was like, it's got to look like the picture. The stitches have to be in the same place, the same amount, everything. So we got that solved. And then uh, Expendables go to hell. I'm ordering a pizza and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I gotta turn off Ghost Street if I can order that pizza. Uh, uh, and I'm gonna buckle down. That's my one thing to do today, even though I did another little thing. Pandemic comic book, um, letter, uh, basically gonna make the print file probably next week. Do as you're told. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, uh, start lettering that this weekend. The other thing I'm gonna be doing is, where is it? Remember when I found a hundred copies of Lost Souls? So I got the Gemini mailers. I accidentally didn't order enough. Um, so I didn't want to send out like half of them and then send like the other half like two weeks later when I got the rest of the Gemini mailers. So I had to wait till I had all of them at once. So now I have all of them. So I'm going to package those up uh, this weekend and then take them to the uh, uh, post office on Monday. Anyway, thanks for watching.